All right, let's, let's begin singing together uh, this morning. Come now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come, one day every tongue will confess you are God. And one day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come. Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come. One day every tongue will confess you are God, and one day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come. Now is the time to worship. Come. Now is the time to give your heart. Come. Just as you are to worship. Come. Just as you are before your Just as you are, come. Just as you are, come. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living. Whatever men may say, I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always here. He lives, he lives, fresh Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see His loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that He is leading through all the stormy blasts. The day of His appearing will come at last. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation. 
permission to impart. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives. Talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. Aren't you glad you serve a risen Savior today? Amen. Because there's power in the blood. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood, come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the prayer. Would you do service for Jesus your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Please stand as we continue to praise the name of Jesus this morning. We know as Christians, he's, he's always good to us. He never leaves us. He, he remains with us through it all, through the good times, through the bad. He's always there with us. He's forever faithful to us. Let's praise him today. Higher than the mountains that I face. Stronger than the power of the grave. Constant in the trial and the change, one thing remains, one thing remains. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love. 
and on and on and on and on it goes. It overwhelms and satisfies my soul, and I never ever have to be afraid. One thing remains: your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love in death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the power of Your great love. My debt is paid. There's nothing that can separate my heart. From your great love, your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love. And on and on and on and on it goes. Yes, it overwhelms and satisfies my soul. And I never ever have to be afraid. Because this one thing remains. Your love never fails. It never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love. And it's because of that love that, that God has for us. That the kind of love that's, that's never going to run out on us. You know, things of this world, they may leave you. They may treat you bad. They may insult you. But the one constant in our lives, the thing you can build your life upon is the cornerstone of Christ. That's what you can build your life upon. Because he's always going to be there. Always going to be there for you, no matter what you're going through. Is that what your life is built on this morning? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain. Trust who? But wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong, in the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. seems to hide his face. I rest 
rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. In the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. alone faultless to stand before the throne Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm He Thank you for you for who you are in our lives. Lord, we're so thankful that we serve a living Savior, a Savior that's conquered death, hell, and the grave. Lord, for our benefit. Lord, thank you so much for who you are and what you mean to us as Christians. Lord, I, I ask that you continue to be, uh, be, be with us throughout the rest of this service, Lord. Our, our aim is to praise you to the fullest, the name of Jesus and no other name. Jesus. Lord, we um, come to you right now. I ask blessings on, on our, our, our praise team and, and, and everybody in it that, that we can sing to the fullest in just a minute. Praises to you to praise your name, the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for our pastor as he comes up in a moment, Lord, to, uh, to just bring us a message from you, Lord. I pray that you just fill him with your spirit today, Lord. We want to hear from you. Lord, um, I pray for that message. I pray that you just speak loud and clear through our pastor today. Whatever you have us to know and understand today. Lord, may we all grow closer as a church to the name of Jesus, the best name there is. And I pray all these things in his precious name. Amen. I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his 
his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. Son of him, then rose again. O oh, trample death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the King. Oh, praise the name. Of the Lord our God, oh praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise, O Lord, O Lord our God. He shall. so much. Please turn the Bible with me to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, 18 this morning as we continue with the parables of Jesus. We're to the parable of the persistent widow in Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Please stand for the reading of God's word this morning. beginning in verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. 
nor there was a widow. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect to cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you again for... Uh, your precious, precious word, and I pray, please, Lord, speak through me uh, to my church family. And Lord, may it draw closer to you, and, and Lord, help, may it uh, help us to be faithful for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Now, the context of this wonderful parable goes all the way back to chapter 17 that we looked at some last Sunday and the context of this section that we're in it's all about faith last week we looked at faith as the size of a grain of a mustard seed right and it's, it's not how big we are or or what we do or say, but it's our faith in the Almighty God. That's the basis of our faith, and that we are all unprofitable servants. And then the ten lepers came, and, and one came back and glorified God and, and, and thanked Jesus. And Jesus said in verse 19 of chapter 17, that your faith has made you well. And that's whole faith, that saving faith in Jesus. And then what happens is the Pharisees ask him a question about when the kingdom of God would come. He answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. So speaking of faith and the context of this passage is, there at that time the kingdom of God was right in front of them. Jesus had come to bring the kingdom. And... Today, the kingdom of God is within us. And how do we receive the kingdom of God, folks? It's by faith. By grace through faith. We receive the kingdom of God, God within us, but the context is fixing to move now in the fullness, the kingdom of God in its fullness. Yes, the kingdom has arrived, but not yet. It's coming in its fullness. And when the kingdom of God in its fullness comes, it'll be in such a way that people can't say, see what's happening, see what's going on, and we should know the season that we're in, but no one knows the day nor the hour. It comes without observation and as we read on that God came in the flesh and he was present with them and and now is Christ in us the hope of glory look in verse 24 of chapter 17 for as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven so also the Son of Man will be in his day. 
Now when the kingdom of God comes in its fullness, it won't be some secret thing that no one knows what happened and there'll be a bunch of clothes piled up there. But when Jesus comes and the kingdom returns in its fullness, the whole world will know that it happened. The whole world will see His return. And in His return, it's not a halfway return and then go back and then a full return. When Jesus returns, when the kingdom comes, everybody will know. And it'll be in such a way as lightning flashes and shines. But first, Jesus says in verse 25, He must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. That's the suffering Messiah. He died on the cross for our sins. He suffered and praised God. He did it for us. And the, the, it, he was rejected. Just like today, his body, the church, is rejected by this world. The church is being persecuted all around this world. People are dying all around this world for the faith in Christ Jesus. And the world rejects his body, just like the world rejected him and, and crucified him on the cross. But in his rejection and suffering... Salvation has come to us by grace through faith in the name of Jesus. It's been given to us. So pray. Be persistent. The kingdom is coming in its fullness. Pray. Be persistent. And in verse 26, as it was in the days of Noah so will it be also in the days of the Son of Man. You can read Genesis chapter 6 about the days of Noah, but they were wicked times. But Jesus said that they went on about their business, and, and Noah was steadily working by faith, building the ark, and, and eight people, his family, was saved on the ark, while the rest of the world, folks, was under judgment. Pray. Have persistent faith. He also says, in verse 28, Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. You can also read in Genesis about the days of Lot, of Sodom and Gomorrah and the abominable sin that they were committing and it was an abomination in the eyes of God of homosexuality and, and sodomy and it's all there in the scriptures and God brought judgment upon them. And Lot, his two daughters and his wife, was brought out. But notice this, in verse 32, well, let's look in verse 30. Verse 30, Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Remember what happened? She looked back. She had a longing for Sodom. She had a longing for worldliness. And she turned back. Folks, the kingdom is coming in its fullness. 
What are we to do? Have persistent faith. Be people of prayer. Be persistent in our walk with Christ as we follow Jesus daily. Get closer and closer to Him And when we come to Christ, folks, it's not a one-time deal, but it is an abandoning the world, the flesh, and the devil. It's an abandoning of all things and turning to Christ and being a follower of Christ. Remember Lot's wife. Also, Jesus tells us that in this passage of Scripture, in verse 32, remember Lot's wife, in verse 33, whoever seeks to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. And we know that everlasting life is repentance of sin and turning to Christ by faith. So in light of coming judgment, in light of the kingdom coming in its fullness, yes, the Holy Spirit is residing in us as a born-again believer, but the kingdom in its fullness, and, and that is our prayer, the model prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a prayer of seeking God's kingdom in its fullness. So in light of this, we are to be prayerful, and have persistent faith as we abandon this world in looking for the fulfillment of the kingdom. Now to this parable. To this parable. Clearly, for certain, the passage is telling us Jesus is telling us that the fullness of His kingdom is coming and judgment is on its way So, have persistent faith. You tired of me saying that yet? What's the parable about? A woman nagging, a widow nagging, a judge who did not respect man, he didn't fear God, he... he, He was a judge, and he didn't have to give her a time of day, but she kept, kept, and kept asking for vengeance, asking for justice. In verses 6 and 8, verse 6 through 8, it tells us here plainly, This widow who had no one to help her, this widow who was by herself, this widow that no one helped or they didn't care about helping. And this judge, they really didn't care. This is called a parable of contrast. Is God anything like this judge? No. He's not. He's the opposite. It's a parable of contrast, two opposite things in comparison to to prove a point. Then the Lord said in verse 6, Hear what the unjust judge said, And shall God not avenge his own elect? who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? The kingdom of God is coming in its fullness. He's going to come on a white horse. He's the king of kings and lord of lords. The armies of heaven is going to come with him. Those who have gone on before us, if it happened today, they're coming back with him. And we're going to meet them in the air. 
The kingdom is coming. But the thousands of unborn babies murdered in the mother's womb, they will get justice. The bodies of the that will be left of God's wrath and judgment, the vultures will eat. It says in chapter 17. Justice is coming. Hang on. Be persistent in your faith. Be a person of prayer. The kingdom will come. The Christians who are dying today, over 20 were killed in the Sudan last week. You won't hear it in the mainstream media. Read the Baptist message. It's our Baptist paper of our state. You can get it online. It's free. People are dying for the faith. They will get justice. If you read Revelation, there's a special place under the altar of God of the martyred people in worship of God. And God says, just a little while longer. Right now, He's saying, just a little while longer, I'm coming. Just a little while longer, you be faithful. Just a little while longer, you be persistent in your prayer. You keep praying for that child that's wayward. You keep praying for the lost neighbor that needs Christ. You keep praying for that co-worker that you're witnessing to. You be persistent in your faith, in your witness, and you keep faithful in your prayers. I am coming back. All the injustices of this world will be made straight and the great judge, the Almighty, will judge. He's coming back. Hang on, brother. Hang on, sister. You stay faithful. The question that Jesus asked those who were listening there, and he asked down through the centuries the church. When the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Will Jesus find you with persistent faith? You cannot have a persistent faith when you're wishy-washy. Well, Jesus may or may not be the only way. That's wishy-washy, folks. Jesus may or may not be the only truth. You know, if it's good for you, then good for you. But I believe this, you can believe that. That's wishy-washy. The kingdom is coming. And it's the kingdom of His dear Son, Jesus Christ, and nobody else's. It's going to be Him coming back. Be persistent. Be grounded in the basic doctrines of our faith. Follow Jesus. Pray. Keep trusting Him. Will Jesus find you with persistent faith? Will Jesus find you as a prayer warrior, trusting, obedient, and serving out of love? Serving in such a way as in chapter 17, as we look last Sunday, we're all saved by grace. Serve in that manner. We have not earned anything, and if we are faithful and obedient every day, we're just all still saved by His marvelous grace. Matter of fact, the next parable teaches that. Will He find you faithful? A faith that is not worldly, like our Sunday school lesson, uh, taught us this morning uh, a faith that can flee temptation they'll know when to, to stand and, and fight in the faith a faith that is faithful or a faith that knows hey I can't fight 
in the flesh this type of temptation the scripture tells me to run a persistent faith a trusting faith a faith that is not worldly but a faith that draws closer and closer to Jesus Jesus is looking at every one of us right now his spirit is the spirit of God is residing in us as a born again believer if you're lost this morning do not know Christ personally Jesus is looking at you he looks at us he knows your heart he knows your motives he knows everything about you he knows why you're even here he knows and you know in your own heart as his spirit speaks to you and to me you know and he knows what your faith is in and what type of faith it is Will you trust Him? Will you, will you follow Him in obedience? I'll be here to help anyone I can during this invitation. As Brother Roland comes and those who are helping him in the invitation, I want to ask you to please bow your head. And let us pray. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit, please, Lord God, have free reign in our midst this morning. And Lord, may we be found faithful. May we, it's our heart's desire to hear from you, well done, good and faithful servant. Lord, help us to be persistent. Help us to have a heart for those that we're in contact with daily and and around. Help us to live for you each day. And help us to love you more and more each day and not the world. And may you have glory, Jesus, in all, all of it. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. I want to invite you to stand. If you need to respond in any way, I'm not going to beg you or nothing. It's between you and the Lord. But if you need to respond, I'll be here to help you any way I can. Please come. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on her way. Let us do His good will. He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toll he doth richly repay not a grief or a loss not a frown or a cross but it's blessed if we trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of His love. Unto all on the author we lay. For the favor He shows. For the joy he bestows are for him who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way 
to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. I need to turn on the mic. I have an announcement, a couple of announcements. One is there's a game night tonight at 5 o'clock um, with ice cream, recognizing the uh, Sunday school class that uh, won the Sunday school high attendance today. Another announcement is it's with a, a very saddened heart, um, but I want to announce that because of I just cannot be the pastor that you need uh, physically, and um, February the 13th will be mine and Alicia's last Sunday as your pastor and pastor's wife, and um, I want to just say thank you so much. Thank you for um, allowing us to raise our family here and to know you and to be part of this community. And um, I will still be preaching around if, if churches don't mind a, a guy that will read a, the Bible in Southern dialect and preach expository sermons. So maybe the Lord will allow me to continue to do that. But, um, but this is with um, a happy heart of, of seeing what God can do uh, in you. And um, this is a wonderful, good church. Thank you again for allowing us to be here. And I got one other thing I need to say, and it's a very serious matter. Uh, and I want it on record that I said it that Miss Vicki Belton and I won the last domino tournament. And just wanted to make that clear and put it on record, okay? But thank you, and um, I, I don't want any uh, big thing or anything like it, not that you would anyway. Y'all may sing, what a friend we have in Jesus, when you know, uh, after all of this, and he is our friend, but... Um, things like that embarrass me, so just, uh, let's just, I'll see you around, okay? But February 13th will be our last Sunday. All right? Um, let's close in prayer. Brother Roland, would you close us in prayer? Okay. Dear Father, we love you so much, and we thank you for this time we can spend together praising your name and learning more and more about you through your word. Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity. Lord, we also ask that you would be with Brother Edgar and Miss Alicia at this time. Lord, uh, just continue to be with them and help them. Uh, they, they've been so faithful to our church, and we've enjoyed them over the years, Lord. We thank you so much for their service to this church. Lord, and be with us as we uh, continue to search for someone new. Lord, please send us someone. Lord, we love you. We thank you once again for it all. Be with us as we, we live this, leave this place today. And may joy be in our hearts because we serve a risen Savior. And I pray all these things in the precious name, the name of Jesus. Amen.